All right, everyone, we are back and we are about to get into what we've all been waiting for, which is solid mechanics. Um, so we are going to be developing a an algorithm or a protocol to solve a lot of these problems. So let's begin with um, sign conventions. So we're always going to develop our coordinate system, one, two, three. Um, when we are stressing a material, so when I'm taking material and I'm extending it so it gets longer here, that is going to be referred to as a positive stress sigma and a positive strain, normal strain here, also a positive sense here, but we'll, we'll get to that in a, bit, in a little bit. Um, if I am compressing my system that's, and my material is getting smaller, that is going to be a negative stress and a negative corresponding strain value. Um, additionally, if we're just looking at a system like this, counterclockwise rotations will be positive, clockwise rotations will be negative here. So that's kind of a key aspect as well that we need to um, think about and consider. So one of the first things that we're going to have to look at is just analyzing a stress strain curve. And there's three regions, elastic, plastic, and fracture. So in the elastic regime, we are pulling effectively on the bonds between a material. But we are not breaking any bonds. We are not moving any dislocations or defects. Defects exist in this system, but they do not, um, basically they are not mobile at this point. So in the elastic regime, we're just pulling on bonds. And when you release the stress, the material pops back into place. So it is elastic deformation. It is not permanent. So it is not permanently deformed. And you can see here, if we're running a test, and this is typically done when we're doing uniaxial um, tension, you see it's just going to stress and then pop back into place. Now, that is going to be accomplished here. Uh, and we can describe essentially the relationship between stress and strain using our Hooke's Law. Now, this only holds for this very, 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 very specific stress state. Um, so. Stress, we're going to define a little bit later. Strain is the deformation over, you know, it's unitless. Young's modulus is effectively a measure of stiffness. Um, and words are very, very, very critical here. Our word choice is specific to very specific material properties. So if you see E, sometimes Y, this is our Young's modulus. In this class, we're going to say metals are going to be typically in the hundreds of gigapascals, so hundred. Um, so if you have any metal, just give it 100 gigapascal. Ceramics are more stiff, so they're going to have a higher Young's modulus. So that's going to be typically, um, if I'm looking at a ceramic, that's going to be probably 300 gigapascals. And then for polymer, polymers can vary considerably, but let's just call it 1 gigapascal. So those are our Young's modulus. We'll always know those for um, our materials that we're working with. Now, in the plastic regime, you can see some other values here. In the plastic regime, this is where we start to have, macroscopically, those materials don't bounce back. So now you've permanently deformed my system. Atomistically, here you can see this is our yield strength. So this is the strength or the stress required to start to move, and the strain required to move dislocations. So here, dislocations are moving throughout our stress strain curve. And you can see here's our yield strength. In the our ultimate tensile strength, our sigma UTS, is simply the highest stress value in our stress strain curve. Um, and you can see that indicated right here. It doesn't have to be always right here, but it is just the highest value. So in that, that is effectively what's going on in that plastic regime. Then finally, fracture, material basically fractures and two surfaces are created. So that's effectively what we're looking at here. And you can see here, this is my stress at fracture and strain at fracture. And each of these different values has different um, you know, properties as well. Um, actually, we're, we're going to see that in just a second. Um, this integral here, this is our elastic strain energy. So if I integrate this curve, so we can kind of go see that down here. If I integrate this curve and multiply by volume because stress is in units of Newton per meter squared. So, and strain is unitless as we're gonna see in just a second. Um, but if I integrate this and I multiply by meter cubed, 
that's a Newton meter, which is a joule. So that gives me my elastic strain energy. So that's the energy stored elastically in my bonds. Toughness is the total area from here. It's everything in here. Toughness will also be in units of basically joules as well. But you're going you're gonna to have to integrate that numerically, which is going to be a little bit difficult, but um, we'll go ahead and we will run with that uh, once we get to it. Excellent. So we've got that. Um, terms. Terms are very important. So if I say a material is stiff versus compliant, I am referring to my Young's modulus. If it's stiff, my Young's modulus is high. If it is compliant, my Young's modulus is low. If I say material is ductile versus brittle, I am referring to, if my, if my material is ductile, my strain at failure is large. If it's brittle, my strain at failure is very, very small. Tough, I'm just going to look at my toughness here versus weak. So what has a larger here? If it's weak, you T here. If I'm saying something, or well, tough, basically strong versus weak, um, actually weak, toughness, I'm going to say this. I'd say weak. If I say something is strong, I could be referring to my yield strength or my UTS or my stress at fracture. So we have to be a little bit careful about how we're referring to strength. And then the same thing versus weak. And again, you can imagine these are going to be all high values. So be careful of your language. It's very, very, very important that we use our language appropriately. So um, be aware of that. So next time, we're going to define stress and strain. So see you then.